Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm your host, Jeffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. We just passed 860 subscribers. I appreciate your guys' support so much, and I hope I can continue to make great content you guys will enjoy in the future. Now, the big news in college basketball right now is whether five-star small forward McKenzie Mbaco is going to commit to the Kansas Jayhawks or the Indiana Hoosers. I'm going to go over where I think McKenzie Mbaco should go and maybe potentially where he will end up in college basketball in the coming days. Now, Mackenzie Mbaka was announced on Friday he will be going to either the Kansas Jayhawks or the Indiana Hoosers, and he was a guy that was committed to the Duke Blue Devils, but when Kyle Filipowski announced that he was returning, he decided to decommit from Duke and decide to go elsewhere. And this is a really interesting factor in his decision because McKenzie Mbaco is a five-star recruit, a top 10 player by most recruiting services in the 2023 recruiting class. He's a six foot eight, six foot nine small forward that plays a fantastic style of basketball. He is a great shooter for his size. No one's really comparing to Kevin Durant or anything like that, but he is still a great shooter for his size and he can go off the dribble and score as well. So he has a lot of great tools and capabilities as a basketball player, which is why he is so high highly rated and why a lot of programs wanted him and he committed to Duke over Kentucky so the Blue Bloods were wanting him out of high school and the Blue Bloods still want him because he is down to Kansas and Indiana he also had St. John's and Louisville he was considering but both of those schools are out of the picture and both fan bases are wondering where McKenzie and Baco is going to go and I think both programs think they have a legitimate shot to land him now looking at the fact that McKenzie and Baco did decommit from Duke because Kyle Filipowski returned Kansas's roster is loaded and I know that the Jayhawks have a ton of NIL and they have a fantastic fan base and they can sell the fact that they won a national title less than two years ago with Bill Self who's a Hall of Fame head coach and he is a guy that has gotten so many players to the NBA. He's recruited so many five stars and if you want to win, go to the Kansas Jayhawks because they have a four-man high school recruiting class already and El Marco Jackson, a five-star guard. Chris Johnson, a six-foot-four guard. Marcus Adams Jr. who is a six-foot-eight small forward and Jamari McDowell, a six-foot-four guard as well. A great recruiting class and they've also brought in Nick Timberlake, a fantastic transfer guard from Towson, and Artario Morris, a transfer guard from the Texas Longhorns as well. So Kansas has a fantastic transfer and recruiting class coming in, and they've also just brought in Hunter Dickinson as well, which is the icing on the cake on a team that's already being projected to be the number one team in college basketball in 2023 and 2024 with good reason. And if Kansas is able to land McKenzie and Baco as well, then Kansas will be the bona fide number one team and the preseason favorite to win it all next year and win the Big 12 Conference. But the problem for Kansas, they have a potential roster conundrum right now because Kevin McCuller is still in the NBA draft and he's testing the waters but what if he returns? He plays a similar position to McKenzie and Baco at small forward at 6'6 and Kansas also has a 6'8 small forward and Marcus Adams Jr. coming in as well and why did McKenzie and Baco decommit from Duke? He wants to start he wants to play and potentially Kansas might be too roster overloaded right now. They're already going to be probably the preseason number one team anyway and getting McKenzie and Baco, yes that would make Kansas even better and the most talented team in college basketball next season with a great chance to win it all next year, even though we're so far out. But does McKenzie and Baca want to play for a team that potentially won't guarantee him a starting spot? Even though if Kevin McCuller does end up staying in the draft, McKenzie and Baca probably will start. But he will not be the focal point on Kansas' team next year because you've also got Dewan Harris as well, and you also have Hunter Dickinson and Nick Timberlake, guys that could score more than McKenzie and Baca next season. But you still have a Hall of Fame coach and he can sell McKenzie and Baca on the fact he just got Grady Dick, a small forward, in this past year's class that's going to be a potential potential lottery pick in this year's draft and he's gotten a lot of other small forwards to the pros. Jalen Wilson improved as well so he can sell that fact to McKenzie and Baca. The playing time might not be there but Kansas is a great option for sure for McKenzie and Baca despite the possible roster limitations. He'll be on a national title contending team and he'll have a Hall of Fame coach and Bill Self and a lot of NIL as well. What's not to like? But the Indiana Hoosers, they have a lot to sell as well because Mike Woodson is an NBA coach and he has coached a lot of great players in the NBA like Carmelo Anthony, Joe Johnson, Josh Smith, so many great players that were small forwards and power forwards that could shoot the basketball. And Indiana's getting two players to the pros this season in Jalen Hood, Shafino, and Trace Jackson Davis, which is a great look for Indiana, something they have not done in a long time. But Mike Woodson is slowly but surely building up the Indiana Hoosers. Indiana has a lot of NIL as well. They have a great fan base. They might not have maybe the fan base Kansas does or the NIL that Kansas does, but they're right there. They're still a blue blood program. And the fact Mike Woodson is starting to get Indiana to trend in the right direction is a good 
good sign for McKenzie and Baco. But besides all that, the biggest reason why McKenzie and Baco would probably fit in Indiana is they need a small forward. The rest of their roster is already filled with Xavier Johnson at point guard, Malik Renew at power four, Khalil Ware, the transfer center from Oregon as a starting center, potentially for Indiana next season. They might need another two guard as well. I don't know if they have enough guard depth, but McKenzie and Baca would basically fill all of the missing pieces for Indiana. The Hoosers have not had a small forward at the caliber of McKenzie and Baca since potentially OG Ananobi back in 2016-2017. He was a fantastic small forward. He was a three-star recruit out of high school. The Hoosers, they don't land five-star talent every day, but Mike Woodson's up in the ante. He's brought in Jalen Huchifino, Malik Renew, Tamar Bates, even though he's transferred out to Missouri. They just got Khalil Ware in the transfer portal, who was a former McDonald's All-American. The Indiana Hoosers are built to win. They just need a player like McKenzie and Baco, and he might be the missing piece for Indiana's team next year. And if they can land McKenzie and Baco, Indiana could be a team that can contend for a Big Ten title. And maybe not be a national title contending team, but they could go really far in the tournament. And it would really showcase McKenzie and Baco's skills, because he will be the starter for Indiana, guaranteed. There is no other player on their roster that can contend for that small forward starting spot. And again, Indiana needs a small forward. Mike Woods is an NBA coach, and he can sell the fact that he just got two players to the pros. He knows what it takes to get to the pros, and McKenzie and Baca could start immediately, have guaranteed minutes, 30 to 35 minutes a game, and he will be able to go pro easily with the Indiana Hoosers and really help Indiana be a much better team next year. But with all that being said, where is McKenzie and Baco going to go? I could see this going either way, and I have no idea where he's going to go. Nobody knows where he's going to go, but if McKenzie and Baco does want to win and he does want the most NIL that he can possibly get, and he wants to be on the potential best college basketball team in the country next year, who can blame him? Then Kansas is definitely the team to go because you have the Hall of Fame coach in Bill Self. You've got the experience there. You've got a team that's brought so many players to the pros already at McKenzie and Baco's position, and Kansas is built to win and potentially be able to win a national title. If all that matters to McKenzie and Baco plus the NIL money he could make, then definitely Kansas is the place to go. And I know a lot of people think he's going to go to Kansas. If I had to guess, he'll probably go to Kansas overall because of all those things, but I don't think it's a surefire guarantee. I would say it's 60-40 Kansas because Indiana's got a lot to sell as well. They've got a lot of NIL. You look at what Trace Jackson Davis and Jalen Uchifino made this past year. It was really solid. They've got a great fan base. It's just bursting to win. They are still a blue blood program, but they need to win sooner. They will lose that status, but Mike Woodson, he has done a fantastic job in his two years building up the Indiana program from the Archie Miller era, and he might not be the Hall of Fame coach Bill Self is and might not have the experience, but he was head coach in the NBA for 10 years, an assistant coach for the other 25, and an NBA player, and McKenzie Mbaco might like the fact that he'll be playing for an NBA coach, and he'll have plenty of playing time as well to be able to showcase his talents and get to the NBA draft easier. He might not win as much as he does with Kansas. He might not be on the type caliber of a team Kansas is, but Indiana has a lot to sell as well, and I don't think this is a surefire conclusion he'll go to Kansas. If I had to guess, I do think he will go to the Kansas Jayhawks, but I think it's 60-40. I don't think it's 90-10 he's going to Kansas, and Indiana got the last visit as well. So it's going to be really interesting, but wherever McKenzie and Baku does decide to play for in college basketball in 2023-2024, it's going to make a big impact either way for Kansas to potentially be the guaranteed favorite to be the preseason number one team and top national title contending team for next year for Indiana to potentially help them get back on track and increase their chance of being a much better team in college basketball next year. So either way you go, it's going to be a big decision for McKenzie and Baco. I think personally he should go to Indiana because of the playing time and for Mike Woods to be an NBA coach and the fact they need him. But Kansas will be tough to top with the NIL and Bill Self is a Hall of Fame coach and the fact that Kansas will be a national title contender next season. But it's going to be really interesting. I think this could go either way. I think he probably will go to Kansas, but I do think Indiana will be the better fit for him overall. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Comment down below what you think about McKenzie and Baco's recruitment as a whole and whether you think he will decide to commit to the Kansas Jayhawks or the Indiana Hoosers and whether you think that Kansas or Indiana will be a better fit for him overall. Follow me on Twitter as well. Link is in the description and I'll see you next time.